Yes, on est ici au Forward Festival avec Neil PH from Zion Train and Cara. So, uh, 30 years still blazing? Still blazing more or less, yeah. <laughs> ok, ok. So, um, but first of all, how are you? Very well, thank you. Very happy to be back in Paris. Even with this weather. <laughs> it's nice, it's always nice to come and play music in France because there's a good, responsive public. And that's nice, mm -hmm. no? Ok, ok. How are you, Karen? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, and this is my first time singing in Paris. Ok, great, so, great. <laughs> well, in France, actually. Ok, yeah. it, it, it will be great, so. So, uh, Neil, you grew up in uh, Liverpool, then moved to London, where you found Zion Train? Yeah, more okay. or less. So, can you tell uh, how did you begin an, as an autodidact in music? Well, you know, I started a bit like most people in sound system start. Mm -hmm. First, I was a music fan. Mm -hmm. First, standard reggae, no. Bob Marley, Aswad, original lineup Aswad, with respect, I must say. Mm -hmm. uh, and UB40, first two albums, you know, the, the good original UK root sound, Steel Pulse. And then I sort of started DJing a little, mm -hmm. parties. And then I built my own very bad first sound system. <laughs> um, you know, built the boxes and things, made, played some parties. And like many people, I got to the point where I thought, well, look, if I'm going to play sound system and DJ reggae music, I want some original music mm -hmm. for me to play. And I didn't really know any producers and I didn't really have the money to, to buy a dub plate. So you decided to compose? Decided to try and compose. Mm -hmm. I don't really agree, to be honest, to, in buying dub plates. I think that's a joke business as well. Um, so yeah, I tried. I had a couple of friends uh, in music projects who had their own studios. And they said to me, well, when we're not using, you can try, you can play with our, our equipment. And so I did. And then just carried on trying now. Mm -hmm. Without YouTube videos, no? <laughs> Pre-internet. And nowadays you can you can decide you want to do anything now. And you, you look at a YouTube video and there's an expert showing you. So unless you're an idiot, mm -hmm. normally you can do it. You can it's easier to learn. Yeah, it's of course it's easier. When you when you when you have people giving you a full live version of what they do, it's it's much easier to learn now. Um, so I don't know if that's good or bad. I think things should be a little more difficult to learn because then you have to try to learn them. everything. No? Mm -hmm. The world nowadays is too easy. <laughs> you, know. you give a child one of these, they're bored within, within one week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My children aren't even allowed to touch my telephone. I give them, if they want to play, I give them a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Yeah. And their, their brain works. Mm -hmm. That's what happens, no? Sure. Yeah. Screen. So you released a dozen albums in the early 90s, but uh, Zion Train is really an experience to heard live. You you uh, you were one of the first to develop uh, this live mixed and live I was, act concept. I was the first. Yes, you were the first. I was okay, the first. It's my concept. Yeah, it's uh -huh. my concept. So how does, how does it come? Um, well, you know what? Um, it's pretty easy when you stop and think about it. First with music. Listening to music on a CD or a vinyl mm -hmm. is a different experience to going out and listening to music in a Definitely. party environment. So from the conception of Zion Train, it was always planned that albums or singles, rele music releases, would be very different to the experience live. Mm -hmm. I see bands, I see big globally famous bands, Manic Street Preachers, no, Rolling Stones. They play on the stage and they play fantastic, but it's exactly like Mm. The CD everyone has at home. So why why do you pay 100 euros for the ticket to go and see them? You and especially spontaneity. Yeah, you need energy, mm. and the energy comes from a combination of musicians and a public. Yeah. So not only do we sound different live to record it, our live performance is improvised because that's how you get energy. Mm -hmm. So we don't say we rehearse for a week and then this this is the show for Paris. We know it. We say we're going to Paris. Maybe we play these songs, let's see what happens. Yeah. And then if the public responds as we try, then they make us try harder, mm -hmm. this energy can build, and then it's a genuine energy. The public are really involved. It's not so much like a concert, it's more of a, 
an artistic happening. Mm. No, we, we make an environment where people uh, mentally and physically profit, benefit from, from the energy we're, we're all making. Mm. We start the energy, it's like we light the fire, mm. but without the audience, the fire doesn't blaze, no? So, so each show is unique. Yeah, and, and has to be different from, from the CD you listen to at home. Because when you listen to the CD at home, unless you're a bit crazy, maybe you want to mellow, you want to chill, you want to drink a nice cup of tea, listen to some music, no? It's a, it's a different experience. Mm. Okay, okay, thanks. So can you introduce other members of tonight's show at the Forward Festival? Tonight's show, we have uh, Cara Hi. singing oh. with us. <laughs> yes. If I could just say, Cara's been singing with us um, for about uh, a year now. Mm -hmm. um, we've we've uh, known each other for a long time. And um, she's been singing up until today with us only in UK concerts. Mm -hmm. okay. From the UK, as we are. But, so, as you um, said, first time in France. First time in France. Yeah, well, first time playing. I, I've visited France a few times. Okay. So, I was really excited about coming and finally singing here because it's always been a dream to, you know, to see parts of the world and, and sing in those places. And Neil has, uh, hmm. Neil has afforded us that opportunity. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a blessing to, to be here finally. Great. <laughs> And, so, yeah. and, then, and then we have a brass section with us, which is uh, Dave Haig on mm -hmm. trumpet and Dawn Island playing trombone, which is also very good because tonight on stage we're four and it's two men and two women, which okay. is also a very, for me, that's a very positive thing. Mm. Yes. Okay. okay, great. So, um, so you're in tour to celebrate your 30 years. You made uh, uh, more than 3,000 shows. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> And and, uh, and so this uh, 30 years tour, uh, you have live shows in the UK, Poland, Belgium, Italy, Czech, Holland, France, and so you'll be in Poitiers, as we said, yeah. uh, and in, per in Poitiers le 7 décembre, donc et in Perpignan le 25 janvier, c'est pour les 20 ans de Culture Dub. Uh, uh, for this tour, Dub Wise No Compromise. Mm -hmm. So how was the audience for the first? It, yeah, it was great. This year, though, is 31. The 30-year tour was 2018. Okay, I'm sorry. So now, no, no, no problem. So now we're now we're in year 31, mm -hmm. and that's why this year isn't such a big tour. Last year was quite a big tour. Okay. And what we did in all of those places is we did different Zion Train, mm -hmm. different lineup. So some, sometimes live bass, mm -hmm. sometimes alto sax, sometimes tenor sax, sometimes. Um, you know, Cara singing some uh, gigs, other singers uh, singing, singing different gigs. We deliberately changed the lineup mm. to do one off performances that would be never repeated. Um, because again, it's, it's something to show like, look, uh, we do this because we want to experiment and mm -hmm. we want to enjoy. Um, we don't like have a fixed formula mm. and it works because people pay tickets and. Uh -huh. no. all, all right, and, and can you tell us uh, more about uh, this? Uh, uh, ZT 2020 experiment? Yeah, sure, that's another um, experiment we'll be doing this year, no, so, um, no, 2020. Uh, in, in 2020, we're doing the classic Zion train, so me, okay. singer, brass section. We return classic to language. this. But also, uh, I have a parallel project that is called the ZT 2020 experience. Mm -hmm. And it's meant to be, again, just for one year, a more psychedelic, take on, on dub because um, the sound system scene pushes the music in a very specific direction mm -hmm. which is good but it's very um, mono-dimensional mm -hmm. fast heavy burr, 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 burr. okay now and then but there's a lot more to dub music mm -hmm. so what the ZT 2020 experience is myself Paolo Baldini um, on bass yes. Uh, yeah, and a guy called Gianni Donito on alto, alto sax, mm -hmm. who's also is a, is a jazz musician. He trained in Nepal and Japan in, in traditional music styles there. He uses his alto sax and some effects himself. He's okay. very, very good. Then plus guests. Uh, and very importantly, we have a traveling VJ mm -hmm. who takes uh, tr global tribal images and uses them in, in his mix of visuals. And so the whole thing is the focus isn't front person, although we, we do some shows with singers, the, the, the focus is the experience, the totality of it. And again, it's meant to be a, a, a one-off thing, maybe we do five, ten shows, 
maximum and then it's finished. Okay. Mm. All right. So, so, so Neil, even if uh, Zion Train is considered as dub veterans, you, um, um, so uh, you, you have obvious reference to dub master as Tubby and Shaka, but uh, you always add other flavors and influences on your mu music and have yourself a big influence maybe on other musicians and on electronic house or EDM music. So yeah, you know what? The way it goes with Zion Train is the musical inspiration isn't really about how things sound. It's much more about how things are intended. Mm -hmm. So you got, in, in effect, regardless of the sound, you have two types of music in the world. You have music that's made for fame or money, mm -hmm. and you have music that's made for elevation. Yeah? So anyone of any description who makes music for elevation, yeah, I'm interested in. Because that's someone who's not putting their personality into a situation. They're not interested if there's one person or 100,000 people listening. They're interested in making their internal energy and the music do something. Firstly to them, and then to anyone else who participates. So me, I don't care if you're a guy sitting in the street with, with your uh, one-string one guitar, or you're someone who's globally known like Ravi Shankar or something like this. It's the same. Yeah, you have this this desire to produce music to make an energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't even have to be a positive energy. It could be an energy of distress, mm -hmm. emotional. You know, it's about expression. It's not about the person. Mm -hmm. It's not about I'm a big artist or I'm a big band or I want to sell records. That's the other sort of music. Yes. So for me, Zantrain is inspired musically by anyone mm -hmm. who's the same on the right side. Yeah, and. Of course, in, in reggae and dub music, there's also some people on both sides of this. Mm. Um, you know. So Nell, you run uh, your own labels, mm -hmm. so Universal Egg and Deep Root Records. What is the different purpose of each one, please? Deep Root, um, which to be honest, I don't think we'll do any more releases on Deep Root now. Okay. But the, the conception of Deep Root is um, sound system style mm -hmm. um, and, and vinyl only. Okay. Universal Egg is much more open platform music, um, including dub and reggae, but also with, with lots of other things on, and any format as well, so vinyl, CD, okay. digital. Um, on Universal Egg we've had uh, Music Concrete. Mm -hmm. Music um, Concrete, really? Yeah, yeah, we've had some very extreme Music Concrete. We've had uh, drum and bass, techno-ish, we've had ambient, ambient in, in, the, in, the, in the style of Sartre not ambient like modern electronic ambient yeah. um, and you know straight reggae music um, mm -hmm. dub music yeah, we, we, we try and keep it, it mixed up the universal egg is um, it comes from a, a creation myth of uh, the Sumerian people no middle European or middle eastern ancient people who had a creation myth where the where their creator was a white dove mm -hmm. a bird no a pigeon Uh, called Yahoo, Yahoo, I A H U, okay. and their myth says that Yahoo um, flies. She lands somewhere. She lays an egg, and from this egg, everything that lives on our planet is born from this one egg, and that egg is the universal egg, and that's where universal egg comes from. It's just a nice story. You know? Okay, okay, great. The story of the universal egg. So. So during your career, you collaborate with, with a lot of artists and share the vibe with them. Uh -huh. uh, do you feel like part of a scene, like a big movement? Um, and, and what about the European, European dub scene? You know what? Lots of people say that we're part of the scene, but I'm not really into all of that. See, when Zion Train started, there wasn't a scene. Mm -hmm. There wasn't dub events. No? The dub, of, the dub parties we went to were 200 people and maybe two white guys, mm -hmm. um, you know, in a, in a rough neighborhood, illegal party, and um, people like Jashaka and then maybe later Zion Train, yes, other sure. people, maybe Irish and stuff also. We made the dub scene, there wasn't, so we made it, but I'm not really part of it with. With the greatest respect to Beepole and Talirama, I enjoy events more 
when it's not all dub all night. Okay. And lots of lots of dub egos backstage, sort of trying to be. I don't really like that now because dub. It's almost like you want to take this world that's music now and reduce it to this. And I, I don't want to live inside that. I, I prefer to live here now. So. So, so I heard you about uh, about uh, loud uh, loud problems. So you so you you don't want a part of uh, this uh, loud race. I don't think the testosterone has any place in playing music mm. to people. And what we have with the sound systems, when you get a guys who you know, sound system started because people didn't have money. Mm. Yeah, a long time ago. So people would take a bit of wood and they'd take a speaker that they found or they took from an old hi-fi or whatever and they'd make their sound system like this with very little money. Now you're playing with 10,000 euro amplifiers. There's two of them in that room in one rack now. Mm. Um, and this is different because this is stage tech here. And um, you know, don't get me wrong, Sinai Sound System is a fantastic sound system. Hugh who runs it is a great guy. Um, but 20, 30 years ago, that's not possible for people who run sound systems. He's invested 30, 40,000 euros into that. That's not a sufferer's game. Sound system was what people built because they weren't allowed into the nightclubs. They weren't allowed into the what you know the security go no black people here. So people go fuck. What will we do at the weekend? We've worked hard all week. Let's get our friend Terry, who knows how about speakers. Let's build a sound system and we'll play our music. That was sound system, and it's great that it expands. DIY thing. Yeah, and it's, it's it's great that it expands. It's great that lots of new people come in. Don't get me wrong. You know it shouldn't be just a ghetto thing, but. It's different when you can go, okay, look, I'll go to Brixton, my daddy's rich, I'll buy a hat, and then I'll go to Hackney, and I'll buy speakers, and then I'll go online, I'll buy amplifiers. That's different. That's a rich boys game. And that rich boys can have games, that's okay, but it's different. It's very different. All of the energy, everything's different. You know? And that's why I think you see sometimes some of the older guys, um, particularly in the English scene, Maybe like Lloydie Coxon, guys who were doing it when I was still a baby. You know, They're, you see them being angry now because they're going, "Who, who are these kids who don't know anything about our culture? They don't know anything about this." And basically, they just have loud music with bass. Mm. And of course, if you put lots of 18-year-olds in a room, give them some drink and two pills, of course they'll jump around and go, "This is amazing!" But is it really? Mm. It's not really amazing. It's nice. Some of the music's good, some of it. But it's not this big, amazing experience. It's a commercially produced way of getting those young people to spend money. That's what it is mm. at the end of the day. Yeah, and that's okay. But let's tell it like it is. Let's be honest about what it is. This isn't a great movement of spirituality, because for me. Rasta spirituality, like most church spirituality, is bullshit anyway. Are you really, really telling me that the dictator of Ethiopia was a god? Or, you know, if you say that to me and you, you say, that's what I really believe, I say, well, I think you probably need to visit a, a psychiatrist. That's what I would say, yeah? So, there's no spiritual journey in that. That's, that's another way of selling things. There's no sort of community struggle to make the sound system. Not in the case of the big sound systems, because that's businessman style money. Mm. Right? Um, so what is it? We have to tell what it is really. It's music that young people like to dance to because it's fast, it's heavy, and there's lots of bass, and there's nothing else to it. Mm. Okay, good. You know? So uh, you you released the new tune in July, Polytrix. Uh -huh. uh, so with three Jamo, we have a video clip, uh -huh. and uh, so it's the first single for the new album, yep. Illumin Illuminate. Yep. Can you just tell some more to finish this interview? Yeah, sure. Illuminate will be released in May. It has nine vocalists on it, including Prince Jamo and Kara, and some other interesting people. Ryder Shafiq, who's a guy who does a bit of dub poetry. Mm. Um, Uh, very interesting. There's an Italian singer called Michaela Grena, so we have our first song published not in the English language, she sings it in Italian. She has sung in Italian. Um, and what we try to do with, with the whole concept, with the artwork, with the title and the music, is to 
try and introduce people to slightly bigger concepts than, that are involved in in the dub world, no? Um, so there's a concept in our title, there's a concept in our artwork. Um, I don't spell it out, it's for people to look at, enjoy, and if they like it, to, to get into. The music has a meaning, the words have serious, intelligent meaning. They're not just some bullshit, you know, I want to ride my bicycle or something. They are, they have meaning, they're studied situations where either the singers or me, or me and the singers, we've worked hard mm -hmm. to try to del deliver a message. The videos are meant to deliver impactful messages. They're not meant to sell music. Mm -hmm. So if you see the video clip for Politrix, mm -hmm. it's meant to tell a story. Um, because we have an opportunity to tell a story. People look at us and listen to us. So it's more about that. It's a vehicle to um, extend our thoughts, share our thoughts with people and uh, invite comment. So we'll also print the manifesto um, from a group of a global group of environmentalists called the Leap Manifesto. It's a 15-point manifesto written in Canada five years ago. Uh, about a man a man it's a manifesto to um, transform the way we live on the planet in order to save the planet. That's also in our artwork. Mm. So those things are important to us. Not having a bigger amplifier than a guy who lives in another city. I don't give a shit about that. Mm. What's important to us is like the important messages and important emotions get transmitted in our in our opportunity, which is our album release or our, our concert. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, my my last question the, uh, has the to be militant. Um, well, it's not for me to say what a whole category of music should be, and in a way, the categories are only made to to be able to sell music. Um, I think if you're making music and you're not putting in a message that you think as the artist to be important, so not some shit I love you or look at me on I grey or you know, if you're then you're a bit of a disgrace because you have this opportunity and the world needs voices. People vote for Don Donald Trump for fuck's sake, people vote for Boris Johnson. The world needs intelligent voices. So if, as, as a person who someone's listening to, whether you're a singer, producer, whatever, then you have a responsibility to have an intelligent, educated view on the world and um, to try and help change that to, to normal. It's not normal that a guy like Donald Trump is the most, the, the most powerful man on the planet with Putin controlling him. It's not normal that we have a, a paedophile prince And, and his mother ruling ruling the United Kingdom. That's not normal. And people should say about, talk about it, and they should talk about these things in music, mm. rather than standing up and going, you know, please make me a big man and, and ma make me some money. You know, that's just that's just being Trump, but with a, you know, with a band at the end of the day. Okay, okay, Neil. Thanks a lot. Merci. Have a good show tonight. Thank you. Merci.